Hello, and welcome to the Patients Getting Paid podcast, where I interview people with chronic illnesses that have found ways to make money that accommodate their health and experts that can teach us all how to do it better. I'm Kathy Reagan Young, host of the Patients Getting Paid podcast and creator of the soon to launch PGP online course, keeping everything crossed. If you haven't already, head over and get on the waiting list to be the first to know when we launch that course. Sign up at Patients Getting Paid dot com forward slash list. Today's guest is Alexa Randolph, CEO and founder of Alexa Randolph LLC. She created her brand after being in a bad car accident and ending up with mild traumatic brain injury and central pain syndrome. This outlet has allowed her to follow her dreams and advocate for herself while doing it at her own pace. That's key. She's a lover of reading, traveling, and drinking wine. She is my kind of people. Welcome, Alexa. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, yeah. I have to do my wine. <laughs> we should have scheduled this for later in the day so we could have been doing this with some wine. I know. Well, Next time. Yes. <laughs> Next time we'll do that. Um, so it's you have such an interesting story from start to finish and I want to get in the way if you would please just share the story of you whatever you're comfortable sharing with your background whatever makes you you well all right then I am an only child grew up born and raised in um, the metro Detroit area I went to Michigan State University um, and got a bachelor's in communications with my dream of being an event planner well, that got derailed, <laughs> unfortunately. Right. Um, I it was actually two months after I graduated from state, so it had been July of 2016. I was visiting family um, in Las Vegas, and we were on our way home from dinner. A lady ran a red, I think, texting, um, oh, and we were starting to go, and she basically like plowed right into us, t-boned us on my door, oh. which was like the rear passenger. Um, I hit my head a couple of times on the window and then like went like this. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, EMS came, checked us all out at the time. They said I was fine. I just like a little bit of a headache, but I didn't go to the hospital or anything. Oh. You would think I, yeah, they told me we didn't need to. So oh, we didn't man. think I needed to. Um, a couple of days later, I was still getting bad headaches. I was dizzy and nauseous. I like saw a little bit of the light. We saw a doctor there who told me it was a sinus infection, that I had a sinus infection that might have been coming. And then when I hit my head, it like just made it come out. What in the world? Oh, I don't know. Because I know that I know the final diagnosis, but holy cow, you went through the yeah. to get a good diagnosis. Yeah. Then I went to, um, so I was there for about a week overall. And then I came home. Um, with my grandma. So I actually was going there to bring my grandma home. She was visiting my uncle and aunt because she had had a stroke earlier that year. So oh, she was like recovering her. in Las Vegas. And so she was also in the accident, but thank God she was okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I had the worst of it, oh. but we went, um, so we went home and I went to my doctors who sent me to a chiropractor because I was having neck issues. But then they told me um, my symptoms were more depression. That it was maybe like a PTSD. Yep. Oh, it gets what? better. And, oh my gosh. This yeah, is the story this is gets like, better. <laughs> this is like we could do a whole podcast on misdiagnosis and, and jacking us around. <laughs> oh yeah. It gets way better. <laughs> so I basically at that point, so that was like August, like late July, August. So I decided, well, if it's supposedly depression, I'm just going to have to like move on with my life the best of my ability. Because my headache, it was more like I just kept getting headaches where I got hit. Like it wasn't, and a little bit of dizziness, but I didn't know. I thought maybe that is symptoms. I had no clue. So I ended up working for an event planner um, part-time and then became full-time. And I, as time went on and we got really busy, I started to notice like I was having trouble like picking things up in my head like they would show me something and I would have to like I would end up forgetting a few minutes later and that was mm -hmm. never me I was always somebody that was like really fast really good at that kind of stuff and I'd get in trouble a lot because like I wasn't doing it right or I was and I had no idea I thought I'm just messing up like right so I actually did have a sinus infection now in December and I went to the doc for the sinus infection 
But then I ended up telling them that I still have this horrid like stabbing pain where I got hit. And then I get like ringing in my ears and like my neck was still really bad. So they sent me like two days later to a neurologist who within a minute of my story tells me it was a concussion, <sighs> which I kind of had a feeling all along, but I'm not going to at the time. I didn't know. I figured doctors would know better. Mm-hmm. Boy, was that's, I wrong. <laughs> that's been a fatal mistake many of us have made. <laughs> right. And then I like started getting tests on. I was trying different medications. I went to like a vestibular therapy. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, I was really messed up. Like she did a test and like my eyes were like rolling around. Like oh. it was really bad and yeah. things just weren't getting better. My pills weren't helping. If anything, the side effects were 20 times worse. So I, did, I went to a pain doctor who gave me a shot for like occipital neuralgia. And that like really messed me up for weeks. So they didn't oh my do gosh. the other side. And are you trying to work through all of this as well? Yeah, still oh, God. at this point. And this Bless is like, heart. and then come February, I like just, I kept getting in trouble, like getting yelled at. And it was just like my head, I just couldn't take it anymore. And I'd be so tired oh, at gosh. the end of the day, like I couldn't yeah. function. Um, so I ended up talking to my doctor and he took me off work. And thankfully it was like a slow season. So it wasn't like they were scrambling to have to find someone. I mean, it was like our slow Mm -hmm. season anyway. Yeah. And I couldn't, so I did end up working for like two years, but in that time, I I had to go to a different pain doctor who basically told me he would have me better in four to six weeks just by walking. Yeah. And I went to- This is like an encyclopedia of bullshit yeah diagnoses (laughs) so I went to this therapy um what's it called like we're light touch I forgot it's called um oh I don't know I don't remember the name like it's like very they barely like hardly touch you but like it fix like helps with like myofascial and a bunch of other things not reiki or not reiki um mm -hmm. it might cranial sacral therapy And she said that a lot of my issues are in the central nervous system. Like she felt it, like everything was all messed up. And I went back to that one doctor, that's who sent me, but like I was for my checkup and I was getting, I was bad. Like I literally like had like tingling in my body. And he tells me, he does my, he has me do his test or whatever, you know, like the neurological test, even though that comes out fine because I am fine. I'm not fine, yeah, but right. And he tells me from that, that perspective, right. And he tells me that I should be jumping for joy. I'm fine. I'm healthy. And basically, I was making it up, over exaggerating oh. that I couldn't have a ten out of ten pain because then I would yeah. be dying. When you don't know, you're with me for ten minutes every six right. months. Mm. So in that ten minute period, maybe I'm not at a ten. Maybe I'm at a seven. Mm-hmm. Mm, and God. yeah, so I left that. He told, tells me I should get off all my medications and stop seeing all my doctors except for my psych, for my psychologist. So Very supportive. Crazy. Very supportive. So oh my I, God. Yeah. I like and then it that. makes you think, it makes you think that, that that's you your, are crazy. <laughs> right. Even though I knew something wasn't right. Right. And in the time I kept having these, um, really bad spasms that would um, full body spasms that looked like um seizures almost mm, gosh. and I would be on the floor yeah that's not depression multiple <laughs> times a day. no so one Crazy. got so bad I ended up in the hospital because it was just so much pain that they gave me like some medicine to like calm my like nerves down and then I was going another for another week or a week later, I was going for my MRIs, like I for a new set of MRIs. Mm-hmm. And it showed that I had like two discs now instead of one. So like C4 and C5, and then C5 and C6, like mm. di- uh, cervical discs, which I had the C4 and C5 from the beginning of the accident. But they all say it's nothing. It's so small that it, they, there's nothing they can do. So I finally went to, I ended up going to a neurosurgeon, a family friend knew the surgeon and he like sat down with me and my parents. We like went over everything. He was the most amazing person. 
He said, I'm too young to do anything. Like they're not bad enough or anything to do surgery. So he sent me to his pain partner who did like the pain management Mm -hmm. and to a neurologist there. So I started a brand new doctors and they literally within a minute of talking to me, they said I had central pain syndrome, which is a neurological disorder due to damage to the brain, brain, stem, or spine. So people with strokes can get it. People with MS can get it. It kind of mimics MS Mm. without the lesions in the brain Mm -hmm. or the spine. And then I don't, and it doesn't necessarily get like progressively worse, Mm -hmm. but like all the, the nerve damage, the pain, like I can't even goosebumps are the worst thing in the world. Sometimes mm-hmm. even people touching me, I'd rather jump out of my skin. Yeah. Um, oh gosh. So that was basically a year to the day that I got diagnosed with it, of uh, the accident. And it was literally July 13th, 2017. Goodness. And from then on, it's just been a lot of trial and error, um, trying to figure out, but nothing's really helped. I'm on no medication um, because everything makes it worse. Mm. So I'm gosh. just kind of living day to day. I am so sorry to hear all of that. What a nightmare. I mean, bad enough that you get in this bad accident, but to add insult to injury, all of these doctors that are misleading you and telling you that this is in your head and whatnot, that's just horrible. And unfortunately, not unheard of. I mean, I hear these stories a lot. It's just disturbing. It's really disturbing. Um, But I think one really important takeaway was, as we were saying, like you of course you believe the doctor, you know, when you started on this odyssey, you're like, right. well, the doctor said whatever. Mm-hmm. That's what, you know, we're, we're, we're brought up to believe that you can trust your doctor and just do what your doctor tells you. You'll be just fine. So I guess kind of the lesson of everything is you know, your everything, body right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And just keep pushing until you get an answer that makes sense and actually helps you. Right. Yeah. So I'm glad you found some help, but it doesn't sound like enough. Um, complete aside because what we're here to talk about really is your business and stuff but I will say that I have recently been using I had been using already CBD oil which I found helpful for pain uh, for nerve pain which yeah much touches nerve pain and then I very recently started using uh, medical marijuana and it's made a big difference so oh like with THC uh, in it uh uh-huh yeah so it's worth a shot. I don't know. What is your state's um, standing? I think know? it's all legal. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay, so. Michigan. All right, <laughs> Michigan. Good for you. Virginia's still stuck in ancient times, but whatever. But I can get it for medical use. So yeah. I would just, you know, if you get a chance, give it a try because yeah. it sure made a big difference for me. And, and I talk to people every day who report the same yeah. thing. Yeah. So. No, I hear good things. So I've been yeah. looking into some things. So yes. Yeah. Um, Okay. Well, thank you for, I'm sorry to have had you go through all that, quite the story, but thank you for sharing about you and you know, how you you got to this point. Um, But since this is the patients getting paid podcast, let's get to that aspect of your life. Um, Would you share the story of your journey to chronic panorism? So I guess we can kind of pick up there, which was you took, you had to take two years off and Did you go back to work for somebody else or did you just say, I really need to do something on my own? Well, the, about a year and a half in, I was working part-time, um, like a marketing director for this do-it-yourself wedding videography company. And I worked from home, Mm -hmm. um, worked like basically my own hours. Um, and I was doing that at home for a while and it was like helping a little bit to like get my mind off things, but I was also, um, and then I ended up working at the podcast studio that I was doing my podcast for a few hours a day, um, but that, before the shutdown. Mm-hmm. But so about two years ago, I want to say, I started um, my Forever Strong or my With Love Alexa blog, which was where I was vlogging a lot, like about my journey. And like, I talked about like traveling with chronic pain or like dress clothing because like I can't wear like tight clothing mm-hmm. it'll like my skin it will get so like itchy and tight and I'll have bruises from a lot of tight clothing um yeah. I talked about daily living and also relationships just like mm. for parents or for friends for siblings for significant others just 
they kind of get perspective of someone that's going through it. Yeah. Oh, that's and great. I, and thankfully, I had the support of my parents and my like family. So Good. I was really thankful the whole yeah. journey. That's great. And what a fantastic um, outlet to for yourself, but also you're serving others and helping other people, yeah. um, you know, and sharing your own journey. I mean, that's, that's just such a great thing to do, I think. And um, I'm glad that you had support. And I wanted to say that you're, um, did you, it's with love, Alexa, <clears throat> excuse me, right? Yeah. So my whole Your website business, it's alexarandolph.com. Okay. Just my name, but like my brand is with love Alexa. And that's like my yeah. blog and my podcast. And your website's gorgeous. Did you do oh, that by you. yourself? Yes, I oh, did. Beautiful. Took me days, days, like 10 girl. hour days. That would have taken me <laughs> months. Um, do you, did you have any background in, in building websites and that sort of thing? Or you just figured it out? Um, for the most part, I'd figured it out. Um, I would like done a few people's websites, like, like Wix or like things like right. that, but I'd never really yeah. done a WordPress site. But so that's I what worked, yours is? WordPress? Yeah, WordPress. Okay. But when I worked for the do-it-yourself wedding videography company, their whole back end was WordPress and same okay. with the podcast studio. So mm -hmm. I was able, I really learned a lot, like just working Doing there because I had to know the back end anyway. <laughs> right, right. So I actually cool. knew a lot, but at the time, um, I did this during quarant the beginning of quarantine, my okay. website, my new website, it used to be yeah. Squarespace, but I changed to WordPress and my ex at the time we broke up in May, but he um, was software engineering. So like for the couple little things, he like helped me that I needed to, but gotcha. for the most part, I did it all on my own. Well, good for you. And it's beautiful. You did a great well, job. Thank you. <laughs> um, so your um, vision for this company it was to provide support to people going through this and kind of and their caregivers as well and their caregivers and kind of journal along the way your your um, experiences and help them yeah. through that right and then you also have a clothing line yes that actually just came about um, a couple months ago I think it was October it started I've had this idea I used to want to be a clothing designer when I was little mm -hmm. but like that, I mean, like the sketching, but I was never good at any of that, <laughs> but I just had this idea for, and I like was starting to make some stuff for my own self, like going to a place and getting it printed. Mm -hmm. And I kept getting a lot of compliments and I just decided to do it because it's like a good way to make extra money and yeah. people would wear this. Like I, it's like, it just on the sleeves, it's like forever strong. Oh, and there's awesome. my symbol is the logo yeah. is this. So that's, solid Very and simple cool. it's pretty and it's yeah um, I have hats bags um, sweatshirts t-shirts wine glasses that's fantastic so is it is it a um drop ship type of business is it like e-commerce or are you physically making these and sending them out um well it's actually like so I have a comp a local company that does it mm -hmm. so they'll okay. do it for me and then I Got just pick it. it up and I ship it ship it got it okay very cool very cool. So um, let's talk a little bit about the impact of this business for your chronic illness. Um, is this currently a full-time job? Is it a side hustle? Or are you starting to move toward it being full-time? So I guess technically it's full-time just because I'm okay. not working right now anyway. Okay. Yeah. So because of quarantine, I'd be able to really made it grow so much more that honestly, like without quarantine, like I don't know if it would have been as successful or has yeah. grown as much because I actually so a little bit about my podcast with Love Alexa so I started with the blog and I was trying to get it out there more and I was just kind of struggling and I had a family friend who owns the podcast studio and I never thought about podcasting that's before. a good like, hookup to have <laughs> yeah I had no clue about podcasting or anything like I mean I'd listen to them but like I didn't ever right. think I would be one right and he had me come to the studio and we like saw everything, met a bunch of people. And I was just like, they were like, you need, this is where you need to do, need to be like yeah. podcasting. So we like set it up. I had a plan. Um, I had no idea it was going to go to where it's gone. Um, I thought maybe if I'm lucky, I'll get a couple guests, but I'll mostly be on my own. And I did my first one on my own. It was just my story and like why I created the podcast. 
-hmm. But then honestly, after that, I've had so many guests um, because I had so many blog sites and different Facebook groups and the chronic illness group that I was able to get so many people that wanted to do it. And I was so bad, like I got so lucky because so they were half hour shows. So I would be on, um, so I would record three episodes a day or a, yeah. a week. So, but one, it would be one a week. So I ended up being able to have all the way through June of 2020. Like so they were still backlog. getting them out. You got a library. That's awesome. Yeah, it was amazing. And because there was so, I couldn't record for the longest time. Yeah, right. And so, um, okay, let me back up here. I have so many questions for you. So in starting your blog, did you have an intention starting that you were going to monetize it? Or did you just think I'm going to share my story and I'm going to help others and maybe down the road, I'll figure something out. It was more that, but <laughs> I thought, yeah, it was more the second one where yeah. I wanted to help others because there are so many people out there. I knew there were going to be like me that had doctors telling them it's in their head and it's all right. this stuff. And I had so many people come out and share their stories, but I would, I mean, it would obviously in my back in my head. I mean, yeah, I would like to, you know, right you wanted to monetize and then with the podcast same thing I'm assuming that you didn't would, maybe yeah. set out with the intention of monetizing but with hopes maybe one day yes yeah okay and so on your um, podcast you interview other people with chronic illness just sharing their story yep and mental health so I call it invisible illness so it's anything you can't see yeah I love um, it okay. and I also just like my my line or my word or my phrase is forever strong nice. so I want to share have people share their stories of being forever strong or mm -hmm. just sharing their inner strength and like during quarantine I ended up really doing a lot with YouTube um, because at the time I didn't realize I could do my own podcast through home mm. so I was doing YouTube for the longest time and I actually ended up getting people from like the bachelor big brother, um, real housewives, like all these that all have oh some have chronic pain. I had no clue. We had no clue. Some had a chronic illness. Some just had mental health issues and, and some they, were just sharing their story. So did they find you on YouTube? Is that how that all went down? I actually found them and that's how I started. Oh, I see. I did. It can't hurt to reach out. Worst thing you yeah. can answer is say no. Right. And so of them and some of my favorites even like I got to interview which was so oh, cool fun oh good for you that's we so all have a story we all have is that true so that's, that's kind of where I'm at now good for you so um how well it's obvious how you monetize for your clothing line how about for your website or your blog and your podcast have you are you monetizing currently or do you have plans of doing so I haven't yet. I'm kind of in the beginning of stages. Um, I think I'm getting a lot more viewers and downloads now that I can start to like maybe get some ads and things like that. I might do like a local business, like offer like for a small price if they want to advertise their business, it may, helps them and helps me. Yeah. And make yeah. a little bit of money still just to start. Absolutely. Yep. Those are all good things. And um, yeah, I just highly suggest you just go for it. Just try yeah. what, just try things, you know, it doesn't hurt to try anything really. Exactly. Um, and um, so you're thinking like sponsorships and that sort of thing for your podcast, maybe. Yeah. I think Good. so. Let or me like those also, little ads and yeah. Yeah. Like host Reddit ads. Let me also suggest to you that you utilize your platform to advertise your own products. So for yeah. your you know, your clothing line for sure. And any, anything that you're doing over on your blog, just use that as, you know, a sponsorship opportunity for you, for your business. That's what exactly. I've done at FUMS and it's been great. It's a great way to get stuff out there. Yeah. That is awesome. So I'm going to guess all of this is just kind of at the, you're just kind of on the precipice of jumping off on all of this. So I can't really ask you, I would imagine if there's steady income or is there maybe no. I'm, Okay, Not yet, <laughs> but right. But you can see that coming. So, yes. um, how do you how do you market yourself? How do you market your blog and your and your podcast? Um, mainly on social media right now. I do okay. like Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, I've also started a little bit with um, TikTok. Okay, great. Trying and a little out and see, but for yeah. for the most part. 
And is that all organic stuff or are you doing any paid ads on any of those platforms? A couple paid ads, little ones, nothing, but okay. it helps. And I've gotten yeah. some stuff from that. So very cool. Anything helps. Yeah. So which uh, platforms have you tried the paid ads on? Like Facebook and Instagram. Cause Excellent. it's like combined or whatever they combine. Yeah. It, they make it easy to spend money. Don't they? <laughs> you can advertise in both places with one click. Um, so I also have like a Google business now. Oh, like a Google okay. business page. It was okay. free. I don't know what that is. What can you explain? Like, you that? Know when you, yeah. Like when you search a business, like yeah. it could be a restaurant and on the side, it'll like show the restaurant like reviews, oh, yeah all the information like yeah yeah, yeah. yeah that's so I right created one and, and so was that like you just went to google.com or google.com slash business or something like that to sign up for it well I was actually just looking up ways to like get my business out there more or my website and it was like a list of 10 things and that was one of them and it gave you a link and oh brilliant I'm starting to get some reviews now so that's been really nice oh that's great congratulations thank you so it's been fun that is wonderful. Um, so I know you said that you do have the support of your family and friends. That's huge because, yeah. you know, and I have a question in here about how do you explain what you do to others, but uh, it sounds like you've got the support and they understand what you do. So often in the online world, people don't yeah. understand. If they're not online, they don't understand what the hell you're doing. It's been, right. um, it's been really a challenge for me to explain pe to people what I, in my, in my, um, real life <laughs> what I do online um so I wouldn't say I get support for it I get more um what is it you do like so, you know a lot of questions and I don't know I try and explain it as best I can but I think until you're doing it yourself it's pretty tough to conceptualize of some of these things but I'm glad to hear that your family and friends are supportive of you and understand what you're doing um so what do you do for health insurance um, I just got like the Michigan healthy plan. Okay. Yeah, it's like the state one, I think. Okay. So you probably went on like, um, healthcare. Something uh, like, yeah. Dot gov. Yeah. Okay. So you went on the marketplace and purchased yeah. that. Okay. Perfect. So that's what we want to get to because there, the point is there are lots of different ways. I think People are scared of leaving their employer because one of the main reasons is because, you know, like I have insurance through my employer or my husband right. has insurance. I have insurance through my husband's employer, something like that. And while that can be the most um, potentially the most economical and oftentimes the best um, broadest plans available, it is doable. It, and there are other opportunities like the in the U.S. Now, I'm speaking of the U.S. because. I hear from a lot of folks all around the world and, and we have quite the different healthcare system than most people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have to worry about this shit. They don't in other countries, but hopefully we're gonna get around to fixing that sometime soon. Anyway, I digress. Um, so do you have any apps or special tools that you find helpful either in your work um, or dealing with chronic illness that you could share with the community? Um, I love the mighty. The mighty. Ever, okay. Tell us about that. Yes. So I, I know what it is, but I want to hear you describe it from your perspective. So it's like, yeah. It's the most amazing website, like of people with all kinds of chronic illnesses, mental health, any kind of illness, like that you get to write your own stories. It's like another type of blog, um, but you can also just read stories and it's people talking from their own perspective, mm -hmm. which you really, I've related so with so many people because like when I was first learning about what I had or when I was scared and it was like, you get to see that all these other people are going through very similar things. Yeah. You don't feel so alone. Yeah. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but on the mighty, can't you also include like a byline? Like you could include your URL, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's a great way to get found, right? Yeah. That's excellent. More marketing, smart girl. Um, any, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Any other tools or, or apps or anything that you find helpful in work or anything? Mm -hmm. I've just started using CoSchedule, which I love, um, to schedule like my podcast guests. Oh, yes. That's um, a good one. I like, well, Facebook now has like, in their business page has like a business suite. So you can schedule Instagram and Facebook now That's a together, good one. which has been yeah. really nice. Um, yeah. Time saver. 
and I don't really know if there's any that I'm using right now. Okay. All right. Um, how about organization? How do you keep things straight? Like, are you a, a pen and paper kind of gal or do you have QuickBooks or you use spreadsheets? I'm such Lots a big of, proponent, like stay organized, start organized yes. and stay organized. I'm a big list person. Oh, I like okay. to put my list and I like to see it crossed off. Yeah. Um, that feel good? For certain, Check that yes. <laughs> I use a lot of Excel spreadsheets for certain things. Um, but yeah, mainly Excel okay. and um, like paper and pen. Okay, good. Lists. Um, so the big question, what advice would you give other chronics who want to do something more flexible or remote, either full-time or as a side hustle? I'd say just go for it. It's scary. And if you just want to start as like a little side thing, go for it. Um, yeah. I understand that sometimes like if you're working, you don't want to necessarily go full force right away until you know and that's kind of yeah. like what I did so I totally understand um but use this time like if you're in quarantine and you can't um if you're not working like use this time yeah right so dip your toes in the how, water <laughs> yeah this is how I got my business so strong even though it's been on about, around for about like, almost two years now I haven't gotten as strong or as good as I am in during quarantine yeah. Yeah. Gave me some time. That's awesome, Alexa. Well, if you would please share, how can people find you? Where, where do they go to find you? Yeah, I'm on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. I think my TikTok's the same, all with love Alexa one. Okay. With the number one. Um, my Got website it. is alexarandolph.com and everything's on there. My podcast, my blog, my YouTube channel, my clothing. Yes, I have clothing line too. It's forever strong. You're very um, busy. Yes, they're very comfy. I actually have two romance novels too. What? Stop it. I you actually kind of buried forgot. the lead, Alexa. Holy shit, that should have been right at the beginning. Okay, when did you have time to do that? I actually, okay, I don't know. See, like it's my brain fog. I don't always remember, but <laughs> girl, I actually I started I it. I understand. I actually started it um, during my well, actually my junior year of college, I'd like kind of started it. So before oh the accident, before any of this, but I really got to work with an editor, a writing coach and everything right after I got off work, like got taken off work. I was able right. to do it. I had more time to like relax and do it. Right. Well, so, that's, that's so great. That's another um, chronic preneur uh, type of job that I think, you know, if people have any kind of interest in or talent for writing, that can be mm -hmm. a really good thing to do that can fit into taking better care of yourself. So we're going to be exploring that again in the future, but I'm so glad you mentioned that because <laughs> I did not know that about you, but <laughs> I know, good I on you. I didn't even think about it. That's but <laughs> very cool. And are those romance novels available on your website as well? Website and Amazon. Excellent. It's with Love Ella and Daniel Ever After. Wow. Very cool. You are one cool it's a series. broad. I, thank you, Alexa, for being here. I really appreciate you. you sharing your story and all of your talents and, and what uh, being a chronic preneur is doing for you. I wish you all the best in your chronic preneur endeavors and in your health and in your life. I hope you'll come back thank and give you. us an update uh, sometime as well. Oh, I'd love to. Thank you so much. Excellent. Thank you. Take care. You too.